Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the web app pen testing series. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through the process of uh, setting up uh, OWASP BWAP. Uh, this is going to be one, just one of the uh, web applications that we are going to be using uh, during the web app uh, pen testing series for a few reasons. Number one, I really like it. I like the fact uh, that it allows you to sort between various security levels uh, as well as various vulnerabilities. So you have the ability to specify, uh, you know, a specific vulnerability that you'd like to learn about. And you're, it also gives you the ability to test it and see how that vulnerability works and how it can be exploited. So we're only going to be using it for a few sections. But again, uh, in terms of the setup, it can be quite confusing. Why is it confusing? Because it's uh, developed in PHP, right? And it needs to run on a LAMP stack or, you know, in the case of Windows, a WAMP stack. So that means you need to have uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Uh, the reason you need a database is primarily because it has authentication. So, you know, and that also ties into the uh, vulnerabilities uh, around or that are that correspond to authentication. So uh, again, getting it set up, um, you know, as a beginner can be quite difficult, which is why I've created a few, uh, you know, Docker images or really just one Docker image uh, that will allow you to get it sub, uh, set up immediately, right? So if you're not familiar with BWAP, uh, BWAP or also known as Buggy Web Application, is a free and open source, deliberately uh, insecure web application, and it helps security enthusiasts, developers, and students to discover and to prevent web vulnerabilities, right? And again, the, the reason I like it is primarily because it has, you know, a ton of vulnerabilities, as it says here, and it covers all major known bugs, including all the risks from the OWASP Top 10 project. Now, it's very important to note that this uh, the latest release of BWAP was quite a few years ago, so it's not up to date on the OWASP top 10 in regards to the most important vulnerabilities, uh, but it contains pretty much all of them, even some of the new ones. Uh, so again, it's all up to you uh, in regards to what you want to explore, right? Now, in terms of setting it, it up, which is where a lot of people, you know, seem to, uh, you know, seem to have issues, uh, you know, as I said, you need a LAMP stack or a WAMP stack, uh, a WAMP stack if you're on Windows, and you need to install, you know, PHP, uh, Apache, MySQL, you then need to configure the database, all of that stuff, uh, which can be quite difficult. Now, on their web page, if you click on download, uh, they'll provide you with the actual BWAP application. This is the PHP web application that, again, you simply just need to, you know, put it on Apache and you pretty much are good to go. Uh, but it's the initial setup process that I really don't like. I'm a man of efficiency. Uh, that's what I like. And hopefully, you know, I can help you out here. So, you also have the ability to download BBOX, which is a VM that has BWAP um, already configured and running on it. And you can use that if you want. But as I said, uh, this is using a very old version of Ubuntu. So again, it's entirely up to you. Now, what, I'm, what I've done is I've set up a GitHub repository on my GitHub profile. So uh, it's called BWAP Docker. I just set it up a couple of minutes ago. And it essentially uh, is a, you know, a Docker, a Docker file that allows you to, you know, simplify this process. So let's take a look at the repo here. Uh, as the title suggests, this is a simple Docker image for the OWASP BWAP application designed to teach and demonstrate various web app vulnerabilities, right? So why did I create it? Because installing and configuring PHP, uh, PHP web apps uh, can be quite time consuming as you need to install various packages like PHP, Apache, etc, etc. So this Docker image or this Docker file will eliminate or automate uh, this tedious process and will provide you with a click and run solution that will uh, essentially provide you with uh, a BWAP instance in a few seconds. And uh, in regards to using it, you can clone the repository and build your own image. It just takes a couple of seconds. It's a few hundred megabytes to build it. Uh, the only dependencies or one of the you know images that I used from Docker Hub was the uh, LAMP stack right uh, and of course that's uh, that makes a lot of sense and uh, you then have the actual BWAP application stored in a folder called app right and I've not modified that the only thing I've modified is just the config file so config.inc as uh, you know in regards to the database connection and the, or the database credential so you can clone the repository modify it as you want and then build the image I've already highlighted uh, how you can you know pull the docker image as well as how you can run uh, you know you can run the image uh, or the container for that matter. So I've already set up uh, or I already have the Docker image pushed to Docker Hub. So you can just, uh, you know, Docker pull, hackersploit, uh, BWAP Docker. 
And uh, in my case, I already have it on my Kali Linux system. So, you know, we're pretty much good to go. So again, why did I set this up? Well, because setting up another VM is really not resource efficient. And a lot of you guys have actually pointed that out. Uh, it's much better if you can have everything running on one system, even if that system is a VM. Uh, this Docker container will not consume any resources or it'll consume resources as required. And it's much better than running a you know VM or hosting a separate uh, system to host the application itself. So we can, again, you can just copy the docker pull command here. And as I said, I already have it on my Kali system. So I can say docker images, for example. There we are, docker images. You can see it's about 441 megabytes, which I think is fair. Uh, but the actual download size is uh, probably one or 200 megabytes uh, because it obvious, uh, one of the great things with Docker Hub is it actually compresses it. So that's uh, awesome. So again, to run it, we simply say docker run and we're running it in uh, detached mode. Uh, obviously, because we don't really want access to the container. Uh, we're exposing port 80 on the container itself and port 80 on our local host or on your Kali Linux system, right? So let me just specify that correctly. So 8080, and then I specify, you know, uh, the actual image itself. So hackersploit, uh, bwap docker. Uh, there are no tags because I'm not going to be updating this. So I can just hit enter. It's going to say, you know, uh, it's run that container. So I can say uh, docker PSA. Uh, you can see it's running and uh, every we don't have any errors there so i can open up my browser here and i'll say 127.001 i'll hit enter uh, don't worry if it gives you an error telling you that uh, there's an unknown database called bwap uh, one of the final steps that you need to perform yourself after running the container initially is you need to uh, navigate to install.php so you hit enter it's going to say click here to install bwap and that's it. BWAP has been installed successfully. I can now log in with the default B, uh, BWAP credentials, which are B and bug. So I can say B and bug. And you can then specify the security level. This is something that we'll be playing around with. So I can just say log in and you can see that it works out of the box. And the great thing with having this uh, in the form of a Docker container is, you know, when you're done or when you're not using it, I can say, you know, Docker container uh, stop. And I can specify the name of the um, the name of the container there. Let me just get rid of the previous command that I copied. So Docker container stop. Uh, specify the container name, right? Give that a couple of seconds. And again, I'm not deleting the container because I want it to persist, right? And I don't want to have to run it again and then install it. So uh, that's one of the great things with containers. So I can say Docker PSA. You can now see it's um, it's actually in an exited state. So that means uh, you know, you can shut down your Kali VM or your Parrot OS system. And when, uh, you know, you can restart it when you're back, you can just, you know, resume from where you left off. So, you know, I can say Docker uh, container start and I can paste in the container name and I don't have to go through the installation process again. So I can just reload that. There we are. So, you know, I can then specify the bug or the vulnerability that I would like to learn more about or that I would like to exploit. So for example, we'll be exploring HTTP cookies and sessions in the next video within this series. So, you know, we can take a look at uh, cookies. We have the HTTP only cookies, uh, secure, so on and so forth. So I can click on that. I can set the security maybe to medium or high, wherever I want it, click on hack. And, you know, this is one of the great things I like about BWAP is it gives you, you know, very good, uh, you know, it actually highlights or demonstrates how a particular vulnerability can be exploited and also from the perspective of a web app developer, it gives them a, an idea of what uh, they could improve in terms of their own application. So it el actually helps you understand where you might find vulnerabilities or where attackers could find vulnerabilities within your PHP uh, based web application. Uh, right. So uh, we'll, as I said, we'll be using this for uh, a few sections that actually require it. Uh, so again, we could also, you know, touch upon uh, HTTP verb tampering which is something we explored in the previous video, uh, you know, of this um, of this uh, web app pen testing series. So again, you can see it tells you, that, you know, essentially please uh, change your password, uh, you know, B, and, you know, I can specify a new password and then intercept it with a proxy and see what's going on. You guys get the idea. Right, so that is how to set it up. As I said, the links to all of these, uh, to the GitHub repository and the actual um, Docker Hub uh, page or repository will be in the description section. I will probably be creating uh, images for the other vulnerable web apps that we'll be using. 
as I said, we're we're starting off with this series, you know, in order to understand uh, web, uh, you know, web applications. Uh, furthermore, we're also getting an idea of how web applications can be exploited by exploring various vulnerabilities. Once we've got a grip, once we complete, uh, once we're actually done with with this particular series, we'll then move on to bug bounties, right? Where we'll be taking a look at uh, you know public programs. And I'll also be sharing some of the uh, the bug bounties that uh, that I've actually uh, you know the bounties that I've been able to get over the last couple of uh, years, and uh, I'll try and replicate them to actually you know teach you a few things here and there. So, uh, with that being said, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, leave them in the comment section. If uh, you know if you'd like to reach out to me, you can do so via my Twitter or via the Discord server. The the links to both of those are in the description section. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. And this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.